Bernie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier, and it's about a time that he said no. Just recently, later this year, 4,100 people will lose their doctor when the South End Family Practice Clinic closes their doors. Dr. Maria Sampson from the clinic said, the current state of health care in Nova Scotia and the lack of support for primary care providers has accelerated this closure. Despite working with Nova Scotia physician recruitment team for over a year, we have not secured a replacement physician to take over any of our patients. Mr. Speaker, how bad is the primary care situation going to get before this government will help Nova Scotians who don't have a doctor? The Honourable Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, a couple of things I would say on that. Obviously, we work hard to support uh, doctors and health care providers in this province, uh, in including uh, those that are planning on retiring. There's a, quite a process there, Mr. Speaker. The only thing we ask in return, and we, we try to pr provide resources to support people, maybe provide a nurse practitioner, maybe provide a family practice nurse, uh, is that they, they, they support more Nova Scotians. So we'll work with the doctors of this province. I believe the doctors of this province know that, Mr. Speaker. And what I would say to those Nova Scotians that are on the list needing, needing uh, pri uh, primary care, Mr. Speaker. We know we've made virtual care available to every single one of them. We know that we're attaching them to, to, to clinics. We know the pharmacy clinics are helping, Mr. Speaker. The mobile clinics are, speak are working, Mr. Speaker. We are moving forward because health care is demanding we the move forward with new solutions. Of the, of the new Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, people in this province deserve to have a permanent family health team, but two more doctors at the Spryfield Family Medicine Clinic are also leaving their practice. These doctors say that despite asking for help from this government, their calls for support have gone unanswered. They got a no. Dr. Rewicka said, we are basically swamped and exhausted. We are on the verge of burnout, and I'll table that. These two doctors care for 4,000 people, but the government said they would only help them if they take on more patients. Now, our Premier is a CPA. Surely, surely he understands that 8,000 people without access to a family doctor is not worth pressuring a few burnt-out doctors to take on a few Question, more patients. Please. The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, we're working, we're working to support the doctors of this province and the health care professionals of this province. People may have noticed the, the incentive we offered to health care workers just yesterday to say thank you for working so hard through this process, Mr. Speaker. We are, we are supporting health care workers in this province in every way we can. No, no question, Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of work to be done, and no question uh, we, we was going to require a number of solutions. But what won't help, Mr. Speaker, is the negativity of the opposition on all these issues. We want people to have access to primary care. We're coming up with innovative new solutions to move this province forward and we will support the doctors through that process, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on her final supplementary. Adding 8,000 people to the 137,000 person wait list of people waiting for a family health team is not positivity. It's a problem. David Waring is one of the many Nova Scotians who will join that list when his clinic closes at the end of this year. He explains, this clinic has been here for my entire family through our health care needs. The clinic has supported us through the birth of two children and the death of one. The closing of this clinic means that our entire family is now without access to primary care. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier commit to going back to the table with these doctors and doing whatever it takes to keep these clinics open and these 8,000 the patients with access to care? As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, I've reached out to those doctors uh, very specifically and offered to do whatever is necessary, as we do, as the team at Health does. People will retire, Mr. Speaker, and doctors should have a right to retire as well, Mr. Speaker, without being made feel guilty about it. But what I would say to the members, uh, the member's specific person and, and the, the message to him is, because you are on that list, does not mean you do not have access to care. Mr. Speaker, what in the, we have offered virtual care to everyone on that list, 100% of 57,000 Nova Scotians have signed up for that. Almost 97,000 Nova Scotians that are on that list have access to a primary care clinic, clinic where they can seek medical treatment in person or virtually, Mr. Speaker. 125 family physicians per 100,000 Nova Scotians, that's what we have in this, in this province. And they're supplemented by, of course, Mr. Speaker, urgent treatments 
treatment centers, expanded pharmacy services, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> mobile clinics, Mr. Speaker. There is the access the to care. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker.